It's what a weird week for Friday, June 16th, 2023. Octopuses and taurine. Hi, everybody, it's weird. This is like crazy being here. Like really weird, weird tale. Well, I got a great show for you today. What's so wonderful? Weird stuff. Hi friends, I'm Scott. This is What a Weird Week. Every Friday we have this weird news of the week, top 10 countdown. We do a podcast, a blog, and then all the stories, the show notes and stuff, uh, they're on that blog. Then we do a YouTube video as well. You can get everything at shownotes.page. Shownotes.page. My voice went up. I don't know. My voice went up and I went with it. Shownotes.page. 10. Number 10, guy on TikTok gets arrested after allegedly jumping in with the alligators at Bush Gardens. A young buck posted a TikTok of themselves jumping into the alligator enclosure at Bush Gardens in Tampa, Florida. He has been arrested on suspicion of burglary, trespassing. That's just a couple of the charges. In his video, it looks like, I mean, it could be AI, I guess, or something, but in the video, it appears as though he scales a wall, gets into Bush Gardens, grabs some snacks from one of the snack counters, eventually entering the gator enclosure. A couple of things I observed from the video. I believe the young fellow was mic'd up. He was like, he had a mic. He was wearing a mic. So this was not spontaneous, maybe. Some people were like, young men, this was all in broad daylight. Like during normal business hours, people were watching. And they were like, young men, look out, alligators. I don't know what they were saying. I'm paraphrasing. But anyway, he didn't seem that um, unnerved about the alligators and didn't get caught by park security either, was later arrested through good old-fashioned detective work. There were some clues on social media, and they were able to track him down. Nine. For number nine, I put the headline through the AI machine, and this is what it turned out. Octopus intelligence, rethinking our menu choices. So I got this breaking news email alert the other day. Usually, you know what it's like, politics, something like that. This one was from NPR, and it was about how octopuses can edit RNA in their brains. NPR pushed that to my phone as breaking news. And I thought, that's kind of cool. Octopuses, they're very smart. The more we learn about octopuses, the more it's like, wait, we eat these things? Should we stop? When do we stop eating the smart things? I don't know. I'm asking the question. I don't want to enter any debates, but they can solve the Rubik's Cube. I do have to say the Rubik's Cube thing, that hit hard for me. We'll link to the video. The octopus solves the Rubik's Cube. Okay, this latest research about octopuses in the journal Cell, researchers are reporting octopuses can edit genetic information and re-sculpt their brain. So when their environment changes, they change their brain. And octopuses may save us all, you guys. For a deep dive into it, hey, deep dive, see what I did there? For a deep dive into octopus RNA and how they measured the changes, check the link in the show notes, show notes.page. I would paraphrase it this way, but I ain't had much learning, you guys. But I would say, and by the way, I can't solve the Rubik's Cube either, when... The living conditions, like the temperature of the water was a big one. When it's colder than optimal or warmer than optimal for the octopuses, when those conditions change, the octopus will change its brain to adjust to the new conditions. And suddenly its brain is like, oh, I don't mind this. All good. The octopus can do that. The researchers are very excited about this one. And again, octopuses are going to save us all. As long as we don't eat them all first. Hot take. Eight. Number eight's a good one, you guys. The secret to living longer. It might be energy drinks. Not exactly, but close. Scientists are looking at a specific ingredient in a lot of energy drinks and how it might contribute to a longer lifespan. This is a bit bananas to me. It's taurine, you guys. Check the label of your favorite energy drink. Is there taurine in there? That stuff is found naturally in the body, but it decreases as we get older, and studies on mice have shown pretty good results. Mice on taurine live 10 to 12% longer than the non-taurine mice. They have to do more research before you run out and buy a case of your favorite energy drink. 
They did look at people, preliminary data from a pretty big study, 12,000 people, people with higher levels of taurine in their blood tend to be healthier overall. This is all, again, preliminary. And don't just switch to energy drinks for breakfast, lunch, and supper. But if you want to read the research, do the dive, do the thing, click the place. Show notes. Seven. Number seven, you may have seen this in your feeds. This got shared a lot. Beloved mascot goes to hospital after fooling around and finding out. I just Googled, is Bernie the mascot going to be okay? And he's okay, you guys. I wasn't sure if it was the same person in the suit every game or if they had a few different mascots that put the suit on for different games. The other day at the Miami Heat Denver Nuggets basketball game, the Heat mascot named Bernie got into a fight, a fake fight, with Conor McGregor, the UFC fighter. It was supposed to just be fun, you know, a promotion, a publicity stunt promotion for this pain relief spray. Instead, Conor McGregor landed some real hits and Bernie, the mascot, or the person inside the mascot suit, had to be taken away for medical treatment. He's going to be okay. And by the way, congratulations to the Denver Nuggets who went on later this week to win the NBA championship. So now I guess Bernie, the mascot, if he has to nurse some wounds, uh, get some well-deserved R&R. Bernie, get well soon. You lived it. How many people have gone toe-to-toe with Conor McGregor? I mean, you're in a select group. You lived it. Six. Number six is another reason to thank the mice. Scientists may have solved obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Scientists at Western University have discovered that a molecule in oranges and tangerines may help reduce obesity, prevent diabetes, and help to prevent heart disease. This is a study where mice got fed a high-fat diet, high cholesterol, all that, but also the molecule from the oranges. And the mice were lean, mean, micing machines. They had insulin resistance, all the good things that happen, you know, that you're looking for in a study like this. So they're still looking into exactly how it works. Then the next step, human trials. I feel like it, they could go fast on that because people, generally speaking, I think were comfortable eating oranges. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Sometimes if they've invented something uh, unusual in a lab, you know, you want to be careful of the human trials. But this is something that comes from oranges. I'm not a scientist. And as I mentioned earlier in the program, I can't even solve the Rubik's Cube. So maybe I shouldn't be talking about tangerine molecules. They sound delicious, though, don't they? Sounds like a some sort of lozenge. And now this message. Hey guys, it's Scott. I want to thank Tangerine Molecules for sponsoring this week's episode. You know, when I'm busy on the road doing all the podcasting things, seminars, and testing out mattresses, I worry that I'll get run down. But thanks to Tangerine Molecules, I don't worry anymore about getting run down. Run over? Sometimes I worry about that, especially if I'm in Europe and I look the wrong way to cross the street. Thanks, Tangerine Molecules. Five. Number five is pretty good, you guys. Man bails on blind date and gets sued over it. I want to give you the details, and then you can be the judge on this one. So this is a fellow in China. He ended up in court because he went out on a blind date and then refused to pay the bill and took off. It was a blind date with a lady and 23 of her relatives. They met through a matchmaker. Well, the man and the woman, not the relatives. The man and the woman met through a matchmaker, and they agreed to meet and have a date at a restaurant. The young woman showed up with 23 of her relatives, and they all ordered a lot. Premium alcoholic beverages are mentioned in the story. The bill was approximately $2,800 American, according to Yahoo News. So when he saw the bill, and the bill was given to him, The fella decided to leave the restaurant, so the young woman and the relatives had to pay the bill. Later on, he agreed to pay a portion. He offered 500 and some dollars, and that's when the blind date lady's relatives decided, no, we're going to take our chances in court. The ruling, the court said, no, the young man should only have to pay the cost of his own meal. 
So not even the 500, whatever he offered, 500 some dollars. He ended up paying them $200 ish. Even that much, like what is going on? Why not blind date? You don't know how this is going to go. Why not just um, make sandwiches and have a picnic? Go for ice cream or something. Am I too out of touch? I've been married a long time, you guys. I feel like if they handed me a bill at a restaurant, uh, it was like in the hundreds of dollars, I would just start to weep until they said, fine, just leave. Never come back. Just leave, sir. Your crying is scaring the rest of the patrons. Just leave. That might be a life hack. Four. United States Supreme Court has sided with whiskey and not with the dog toy company. We had the initial report on this on our show. Now we have a ruling by the Supreme Court. They said this story might change the way we look at different brands, things that are trademarked, and can you do parody things with popular brands? This is about a dog toy that looked like a bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey. It was a chew toy for dogs that looked like Jack Daniels, and Jack Daniels said, whoa, whoa, wait a second. That's our brand, our logo, our whatever, our intellectual property. You're making money off it. You did not pay us any of that money. That is me paraphrasing. Just in case you thought I was reading from the court documents. Nope. Paraphrase. A couple of things about the dog chew toys. There were more than just the Jack Daniels one, and they all seem to have the same theme, which is poop jokes. This one in particular, the label says old number two on your Tennessee carpet. The actual bottle of Jack Daniels would say old number seven. So, you know, they're being cutesy. They're having fun with the slogans and that. But... They lost a unanimous decision from the United States Supreme Court. The court found that the toy is in violation of the trademark owned by the Jack Daniels company. These toys are around 20 bucks. Is that a good deal? I don't have a dog. Is 20 bucks for a Jack Daniels chew toy? Is that good? After all this, Jack Daniels felt like they had to come out with a statement or they felt they needed to stress that they love dogs. They just don't want to be ripped off or have their trademark violated by a company that has dog poop jokes adjacent to something that looks like a label for Jack Daniels whiskey. If you want to see a photo of this, check the show notes. It was close enough. You knew they were, you knew it was a spoof of Jack Daniels. A lot of brands were hoping this is how it would go. Nike was watching this closely. Campbell's Soup, Levi Strauss, a lot of famous brands were like, Supreme Court, you need to side with the brands on this. So they're happy. And the dogs... As long as the dogs have something to chew, I think they'll be okay. Three. From dogs to a cat. In the news, there's a drive-in theater on Prince Edward Island, East Coast, Canada, home of Bud the Spud, Delicious Potatoes, uh, home of Anne of Green Gables, wonderful vacation destination, right? And they have a drive-in theater. Uh, They have asked at the drive-in, please stop stealing our cat. The cat lives with the people who run that drive-in. Timber the cat is very friendly. Sometimes Timber will choose to watch a movie with a new friend that they've just met. And it's happened five times now that the movie watchers who meet Timber either assume the cat is a stray or once or twice Timber just fell asleep in the back seat and the people didn't know and then they got home and they were like, wait, there's a cat. Anyway, five times now, This cat has gone home with somebody else and then been returned. So that's weird, right? No cat is that friendly, right? That's the weirdest part of this story, right? How big is the world's biggest catfish? Very, very big, scary big. I don't know if where you're at, they have a restaurant with a fish tank. Where I live, there's this chain and they have a fish tank. And ironically, they have fish on the menu also. The fish in the tank watch as you eat one of their relatives. And the staring is unnerving. Anyway, so I've seen a catfish up close. I'm a city slicker and all that, but I've seen a catfish up close at this restaurant. And I thought it was a pretty good-sized catfish until I saw the world record story. This fellow in Italy fished out a catfish that's 9 feet 4 inches long. Over nine feet. The old world record catfish was a little bit shorter than that. Also caught in this same river in Italy. You got to see the photo, the giant catfish. Well, just imagine a catfish and now it's a giant. There, I guess I've saved you a click. Also of note, it was catch and release. 
So you catch the nine-footer, you get your photos, you do the official measurements, and then it goes right back into the river. Do want to send a shout-out to Ben Hooper for that story, Ben Hooper at UPI. He is the weird news person, the weird news reporter, and every week, Ben, or I like to call him Hoops, keeps coming through with solid gold. So Hoops, someday you and I should, we should do a sit-down, you should let me interview you, Hoops. No, no, I'm turning the tables on you, Hoops. I'm interviewing you. I'm doing the story on you, Hoops. To be continued. One. The weirdest story of the week is Belgian dad fakes own death because felt unappreciated. I guess I should give full credit. I saw this first on the Philip DeFranco YouTube channel. You know that feeling when people take you for granted and you start to think no one appreciates you and you want to do something about it. That's how this dad was feeling, this 45-year-old dad in Belgium, and he decided to fake his own death. I will fake my own death. I don't speak Belgian, so this is paraphrase. I will fake my own death, and then I'll show up at my funeral in a helicopter, and that'll show everybody. Then I'll be appreciated. So at first, I'm thinking that's a nice message. You know, appreciate the ones you love, because at some point... They will not be in your life. And so it's a good reminder. Appreciate. And I feel bad this dad was feeling unappreciated. But also, if you thought your loved one died, and then they showed up at their own funeral in a helicopter, a flashy entrance uh, in a helicopter, at first, I'm sure you'd be like, hey, awesome, you're not dead. Let's hug it out. But they show up to where you were mourning and they're in a helicopter. First of all, I've never been in a helicopter, so jealous. I'd have to deal with jealousy. And then, you know, you realize you've been had. You've been pranked. You've been punked. That wouldn't feel great. At first, yes, appreciate the person, glad they're alive. But then the anger would settle in. And there's nothing worse than an angry funeral, you guys. Also, this fellow's a TikTok personality or something like that. Seems like this was some sort of social media deal. It went viral on social media. So, and the immediate family was in on the prank. The wife and children knew. They were posting on their social media things like, rest in peace, daddy. I'm not so sure that I support this. I'm glad none of my friends pulled a stunt like this. And I just want to say it now, not that any of my friends actually listen to this podcast, but friends, if you pull a stunt like that, I'll tell you this. You get one funeral out of me. So if it's your fake funeral, and then later on you actually die, I'm not going. You get one funeral. Too harsh? Is that too harsh, you guys? Well, on that note, we're done. If you want to check the show notes, see the pictures and the videos and all that, get into the stories a little deeper, go shownotes.page. If you want to subscribe or like or 19-star reviews, again, shownotes.page. And... Our YouTube video, if you want to check that out, shownotes.page, or YouTube also, and look for What a Weird Week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>